often said this before, but I truly believe this, that it's an absolute privilege to work for our wonderful British royal family. People don't realise, of course, that it can open so many doors for you, no matter how long you've worked for them. I remember going for an interview many, many years ago as a casual employee to Buckingham Palace. And it was fascinating because, you know, the salary was very, very poor. And the bottom line was we were sent there from an agency. And it's funny what you remember, isn't it? And that was in Firth Street in Soho. And if you were resting thespian, you could sign on at this agency and they may send you to the Savoy, the Dorchester. It was very much high end uh, sort of serving staff, waiting staff. And you got to, you know, go into some amazing places and naturally meet some amazing people at the same time. I got offered the potential to go and be a full-time employee at Buckingham Palace, but sadly, oh, maybe a relief for them, I decided to turn it down because although it was a living job, I didn't really like the idea of being, well, literally tied to one particular job. And obviously I was trying to craft a career in a totally different sphere. Of course, some people are really well suited to that life in service, none other than this particular gentleman, otherwise known as Backstairs Billy, William Talon. And William, of course, I told many people before here who watched this channel, I was lucky enough to meet and I got to know him, not, you know, brilliantly well, because you never really knew what character you were going to get with Billy. He was always upbeat, but sadly after I started to see him and become friends with him, he'd been let go by the British monarchy and had, <laughs> coin a phrase, good and bad days, you know. He couldn't really Really decide who his friends were and who he could trust but the one thing that was a constant was his absolute devotion to the British monarchy some might say to his own detriment in the end and what emerged really when you think about it was that there was a man who literally did dedicate his life to service for the British monarchy and as he pointed out to me in one chat in one of his favorite sort of um, haunts shall we say the bottom line for him was that he couldn't understand why people would suddenly decide to write a book, say like a former press secretary or something like that. Why would you need to spill all of those secrets? He'd also been very concerned and had seen what had gone before because if you remember, rather scandalously, the former nanny, whatever you want to call her, Crawfy, uh, of Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret had written a book and then was ostracised and he certainly didn't want that. Now what was interesting about William Talon was the fact that he really could have get, you know, taken a job anywhere around the world. And we're talking superstar power jobs, the likes of, you know, a buckler for a Hollywood mogul. He got so many offers. And also at that point, I was working inside a television channel over here in the United Kingdom, and they would have regularly liked him to come on and not be salacious, but just to talk about perhaps what things may have happened, uh, you know, big public events, whether that be Trooping the Colour, that sort of stuff. He always turned them down because he just didn't feel it was right. But there was a bigger, darker secret behind the reason really why he stepped away from doing anything like that after royal life had ended for him. Let me explain. The thing is, like a lot of people, I experienced this myself working in hotels. In those days, they used to offer you a full-time live-in. And there'd been people there that I met that had lived literally their whole lives inside the hotel. Everything was founded for them. You know, you had dinner, bed and breakfast, your sheets, your towels, soap, everything. So what you earned was your spend. But what it didn't really deal with was real life. You know, you didn't know how to pay a gas bill, electric bill, do anything what everybody normally does in that particular life. And William Talon was simply no different. He had friends who did shop for him. He'd never really been to supermarkets. We laughed about sort of things like that. He hoke, particularly when you're a lot younger. You know, you think, what? You've never done this? But of course he hadn't. Now, the downside to William Talon's end was very tragic, as many people know. Sadly, at the passing of the Queen Mother, he was very quickly dis dispensed with and he couldn't quite believe it lots of things that had been given to him letters mementos and things he was forced to burn even though I truly believe he would never have exploited that particular angle of his life now the thing is Billy truly believed in the latter part of his life that at some point he would be recalled simply because he was good at the job and more importantly he'd not actually dished any dirt in public as had other previous servants you know the ones I mean but he waited and waited for the call. And as he told me, he was absolutely perplexed. He thought he might go back in some sort of superior uh, supervisory role, guiding and helping maybe for banquets and stuff like that. 
Tragically, he was so fed up at not being able to get back into his royal life, he told me that he hoped at some point to be able to return as something of a tour guide. This was at the explosion of when, of course, royal palaces were starting to have open days and historians. And I thought, wow, that would be good. But sadly, I did believe a bit of a come down, as one can imagine. When that didn't happen, he then was invited, but sadly turned the idea down, to be something of a similar thing at the House of Commons, the Houses of Parliament. What better than to have somebody with all that regal history behind him? You see, the bottom line was William died a broken man, and he couldn't believe he'd been let go from the family that he dedicated himself to. And he truly loved and adored the Queen Mother. He really did care about this particular lady. And of course, other senior members of the British monarchy. But they felt, according to that source, that he simply got too close and couldn't detach himself from what was a working role to a more personal role. He always denied this, but the bottom line was he never fully got back in to the life that he'd hoped to return even in some small crumb. And the tragic life of Billy Talon recently was of course a play in the West End, didn't do particularly well because it tried to, shall we say, um, how can I put this nicely, put him in a more positive light. And in reality, the man was broken. And when he finally did decide to close the door on his royal life, his life really spiraled out of control. More importantly, his drinking took over and he was less trustworthy with people around him having drunk too much and revealed one too many secrets. Sad news, I'm sure you'll agree. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.